That read my mind. All right, so I was just going to ask you, how many kilojoules would this be? So to the second power. Yeah. Should it be more or fewer kilojoules? It would be fewer. Because kilojoules are bigger. That tells you to divide by 1,000 and not multiply by 1,000. So it would be 2.12 times 10 to the, no, 10 squared. This is actually such a small number that maybe we wouldn't use scientific notation for this. What's this as a regular number? Point, um, it's 200. 200? Wait, yeah, wait, wait two, no. Two. I'm, well, I'm thinking of negatives. <laughs> yeah, 200. 200. Yeah, this tells us this is positive, so we move the decimal point two places to the right. So you could just say it's 212 kilojoules. I always think it's negative because we work on K, we always usually work with negatives. Well, G is negative. We're working with negative numbers, but not negative exponents. Oh, I see what you're saying. OK, so here's our two possible answers. So you might want to make a note here. This formula only works in joules, not kilojoules. So a very common trap is, suppose she had told you, suppose she had told you that the delta G was negative 212 kilojoules and asked you to find the cell potential. Well, then what number would you plug in for delta G? You wouldn't plug in 212. You would first have to translate that into joules. So you need to make a note that this formula assumes everything's in standard SI units. So this formula assumes everything's in joules. But it's very common here for the information to be given in kilojoules. And then you'd have to make that conversion. She's totally going to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a pretty standard term, pretty standard uh, track. All right. Um, and that, that's in a way that's fair, because if you were in a real lab, you really would be working, going back and forth between kilojoules and joules. Those would both be common units to be used here. Uh, so we need to know what to plug into this formula. Now this came out to be negative. Is that what we expected? Yes. Because it's a spontaneous reaction. Again, if this had come out positive, we know we would know that somewhere along the way we made a math mistake or a set of mistake. All right, so now we figured out the delta G. Uh, something they sometimes ask then is, what's the maximum amount of work we could get out of this cell? Well, what is the maximum amount of work we could get out of this cell? Excellent question. <laughs> Any idea? Yeah. Now, do you know, do you know what are the units for work? Kilojoules. Yeah, kilojoules or joules. Of course, kilojoules and joules are both units for the same thing. All right. Well, that's a clue that maybe this is the answer, because that at least has the right units. All right. And in fact, it is. So one, what, one, one reason why people care about the free energy is that it tells you the maximum amount of work you can do. That's kind of encoded to the name free energy. It's telling us how much energy is free to be used to do work with, in a sense. OK. All right, so the delta G is telling us the maximum amount of work that we can get out of the system. Um, and this, and it wouldn't make sense to say you can get negative 212 joules, kilojoules of work. You would say, because the negative G, because that, first of all, we couldn't get any work out of it at all if this wasn't negative. Um, other, uh, and because it's negative, we can get work out. How much work can we get out? 212 kilojoules. Again, it doesn't make sense to say you're getting negative 212 kilojoules of work. So I guess the work would be the negative of the delta G. So it's a negative sort of sort of work like the delta H, where it's like you're getting something out of it if it's negative? Because it's exotherm, so you're getting heat out? Actually, uh, but the, the only problem here is that the reason, so this delta G tells us how much energy, the delta G here represents the amount of the energy change that's going into the system. Well, um, here, no energy is not going into the system, so this is negative. But when we talk about the work, we're talking about the work that's being done by the system. Um, not on the systems, that's the reason why they end up with different signs. So that's a little confusing. How much work, so uh, you might say that how much work are we doing on the system? We're doing negative 212 kilojoules of work on the system. That's just a code of saying we're not doing any work on it, work is being done by it. It's just that weird mathematician's way of phrasing it. Okay. Uh, for me, the, the, the simplest way to think about the signs is just to say this is doing work, and it wouldn't make sense to say it's doing negative work. That doesn't really make sense. So it's doing positive 212 kilojoules of work. Okay. All right, so that's one something to have in your notes. Why do we care about delta G? It tells us the maximum amount of work that we can get out of the system. So again, suppose the problem had given you this cell and asked you what's the maximum amount of work you can, you can get out of the system. Notice how much prep preparatory work you would have to do before you can get that answer. Uh, we'd have to set up the half reactions and figure out the cell potential before we could figure out the delta G. Uh, in order to do that, we need to know what n is. All right, well, we might as well finish off. How can we figure out the equilibrium constant here? Well, we can plug it uh, into this equation. What number would we use for r? The 8.3145. Yeah, there's different um, constants for r in the back of your book, but we want to use the r that's in standard units, um, and that's the 8.314. Um, 
It's in, it's in joules and other stuff. How yeah. Many yeah. That's right. That sounds right. <laughs> we don't want to use the one that's 0 0.08206 because that's in liters and atmospheres, which are not standard units. Um, all right. So we use the 8.314 value here. Um, and what would we plug in for the temperature? Uh, we plug in the temperature. What, what would if they don't tell you the temperature? What would you assume the temperature? Standard. Is, which, which is 25 degrees Celsius. That's right. So what number would I plug in here? Two seven. 298. 298. <laughs> That's right. 298. So you're right that standard temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Um, standard conditions is 25 degrees Celsius, which is 273 plus 25, which is um, 298. This is a little confusing because standard conditions are different from STP, which you might have learned about when you did ideal gases. STP has a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. But when they use the phrase standard conditions, that's 25 degrees Celsius. It's not very good terminology because they both got standard in them. But STP is 0 degrees. Standard condition is 25 degrees. Well, in these problems, you're never going to use STP. STP is for things like ideal gas problems. So we're not using STP. That would be for ideal gas problems. We're using the idea of standard conditions, which would be 25 degrees Celsius. This makes sense. What is the standard temperature when you're in your lab? Well, the standard temperature is room temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius. So it makes sense that we're plugging in this number. Hopefully, your lab isn't at zero degrees Celsius. So that wouldn't really be a standard number to plug in here. All right, so if they don't tell you the temperature, you can assume that it's 25 degrees. But you don't plug in 25, you plug in the 298. Um, so instructors love giving you Celsius and seeing whether you're going to plug in Kelvin. So you have to watch out for that. Um, oh, so then we might have to do a little bit of uh, algebra here to find K. So maybe we should work out how to do that. So what's the equation? Well, let's, uh, let's just uh, start by just doing this. So our equation here is delta G equals negative RT natural log K. Let's just work with variables to start with. What do we need to do to solve this equation for K? What would we do first? We want to solve that equation. That's right. Good. So, what, what what new equation would that give us? still isn't by itself. So we're going to have one more step. What do we have to do to get the k by itself? This is a tricky step. Yeah. Good. So let's write down what that would give us. Maybe it's easier to write than to say. Equals. Right. Basically, remember that from algebra, the way to get rid of something is by doing the opposite. After all, here, the r and the t were multiplying times this, so we did a division to get rid of them. Division is the opposite of multiplication. What's the opposite of taking the natural log of something? The opposite of taking the natural log of something is, um, yeah, it's hard to say, but um, raising it to a power of e. That's not even the right way. Of, uh, raising e to that power. The opposite of taking the natural log of something is raising e to that power. And of course, in algebra, you can only do something to the left side if you also do it to the right side. 